The stone was moved. The Lord has gone away. The angel said, Fear not, I know whom seek ye. For he has risen.
have been to the to know that reason so. Bible you want to look with me this evening, we're going to go into the book of James and the fourth chapter. <clears throat> the Bible said, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, either your lusts at war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Amen. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud but give grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. <clears throat> Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double mind. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Yeah. Praise the good Lord. Just briefly before we go on in to the message. Sometimes along the way, the Lord has moved on me to preach against adultery. And some folks think that adultery is just one thing. But in that fourth verse, James refers to the, those that were, that were guilty of this as adulterers and adulteresses. How were they committing adultery? And he goes right on and he says, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Amen. Uh, that whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. When we get too acquainted with this world, we commit adultery against the Lord. And the church would say, Amen. 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 The world is not your friend. Now, I want to move on. I just wanted to to show you that that what we preach is scripture. Yeah. That there is an adulterous relationship we can have spiritually, uh, and that's being a friend with the world. That don't mean you can't be good to worldly people. Don't mean you can't show the love of God. It, it's talking about the things of the world, and uh, as children of God, we can't do that. Or we get in trouble with the Lord. There's a lot that uh, may not know it, but they're courting with the world today. And uh, I, I thought how that uh, we have to be careful what we do at all times. But the world is still the things of the world are still our enemy. 
because they will draw our hearts and our minds away from the Lord. James goes on and he says, do you think the Scripture uh, saith in vain the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We just as brief as a camp night. I know it's Wednesday, halfway through the week. And uh, but has it been a good week so far? Amen. How blessed that we've been. How blessed we are to be here. As I was talking with the Lord, this little thought began to get up on my heart that James gives us a key to the seventh verse. He has what I would say uh, <coughs> Two verbs that he gives us. And the first one is submit. And the second one is resist. And it's important that we get we get those in the right order. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Yeah. And sometimes if we're not careful, we will submit and we will resist but we get them backwards and we will submit to that devil and if we're not careful we will resist God have you ever been guilty of that yeah. well let me put it this way <clears throat> You get up, you go to try to please the Lord, and here comes the devil. And he begins to talk to you. And I have never, that I know of, that I could ever remember, has he ever come to encourage me to do good. He has always come to discourage I have found myself at times going through the day allowing the enemy to visit with me. Maybe you've not been there, but I have. I sat and he talked. And I listened and he talked some more. And he talked some more and I began to get down. Until I come to the moment, and if anybody's been around me, they thought I lost my mind. For all the world, people don't understand. But until I come to the moment that I realized who it was and what he was trying to do, <clears throat> he was trying to get me to submit. He was trying to get me to yield to him, to to get to allow him to have power over me. And in a moment that I spoke aloud and I said, this is nothing but the devil. Amen. And you may, you may not talk to him, but I, I talk pretty <coughs> plain and rough to him sometimes. Devil, I know that this is you. Amen. And I know what you are trying to do. Oh, no. yeah. And I refuse to sit and listen to you any longer. Yeah. I've got no time to listen to you. There is no reason for me to continue to entertain you. The Lord rebuke you. Yeah. Make you leave me alone. Yeah. And guess what happened? The devil eased off of me. In that moment I had a choice. I could either resist him or get into him. Likewise, at times, the Lord would begin to deal with me about maybe doing some, something or wanting me to do something for Him. And in that moment, I have a choice. Either I submit to the Lord or I resist what He wants me to do. You have been there? Amen. Step out. 
Lord, there's so many others that's here that's greater than me. I'm resisting the Lord. Go pray. Lord, I go here in a little bit. I'm busy at the moment. Uh, waiting for company to come. Got things got to do today. Got this I got to take care of. I'll pray later. Wow. I resisted the Lord. Give me this day. Well, Lord, I would. I got an appointment today and I just can't do it. Yeah. I resisted <clears throat> the Lord. But then again, there's those other times when He said, go pray. And we drop what we're doing, we go and pray. I submitted to the Lord. I, I felt maybe Monday, as everybody was was driving along, guess who came to visit me? Guess who was at my house Monday morning? And here he starts. And he goes on and he goes on to finally, I'm just going to tell you, I began to talk to myself. You ever talk to yourself? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever talked to your flesh? Yeah. yeah. I have. Yeah. And I was doing it that day. That enemy will press you so bad he'll keep you in bed. Yeah. Yeah. He'll press you so bad he'll keep you shut up at home. He'll come to you and he will press you so bad that, that you won't come to prayer. He'll press you so, so, so hard that you find it difficult to even pray at home. But I found myself saying this. You sorry flesh. Get on up and go on. You know this is the enemy that is pressing you. You know that the enemy, if you let him, will stop you from what you need to do. Get up and go on. Sometimes you have to press back against that devil that visits with you. He comes, he wants, you know, when he came to Jesus, what did he ultimately want to do? He wanted to tell Jesus what to do. If thou be the Son of God, command me breath, we may stop. He's trying to tell the Lord what to do. Cast yourself down. Kneel, bow down to me. What do you reckon the enemy wants when he comes to your door and begins to talk his ultimate goal? He wants you to bow down to him. He wants you to give him honor. You would never want to give the devil honor, would you? No. Well, every time we stand up and we say the devil was so powerful this week, I could not. Yeah. We've honored him. But I can dishonor him tonight. <laughs> Then was a troublemaker, a liar, a thief, a robber, and a killer, a murderer. A liar from the beginning. The truth's not in it. When he comes and he talks to you and tells you how bad things are and how impossible everything is, in that moment you remember he's lying to you. Would you agree tonight that there's nothing too hard for God? So many times down through the years we'll say, God can do anything. There's always somebody that wants to you know, throw their little two cents in. You can't fail. Well, silly, who in the world ever went to Him and asked Him to fail? Right. Who in the world has that kind of request? That come from that other fellow. Yes. But when you come to the thing that the children of God need, God can do anything you need Him to do. But when the enemy comes, then he comes to press your mind. He comes to talk to you. He comes to get you discouraged. You have a choice. Either submit or resist. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Every one of you here that journeyed with us Monday, we've resisted the devil. Amen. And we've submitted to God. Now you reckon that made that old devil angry? Now I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, children, the more you stir in the Spirit, the more you want the Spirit of the Lord to come, the more the enemy's going to come and he wants you to submit to him. He wants you to submit to his will. But we're not seeking for our own will. 
And we surely are not seeking for His will. We are seeking for the will of God. How do I resist Him? Well, James told you. First, submit to God. Yield to God and let God be in the driver's seat. Let God have control. Follow the Word of God. We not always have a prophet tell you what to do. But brother, this book lays out for me and you. He gives us the answer that we need. And it is as good as any true called prophet of God. When you begin to submit your life to the Lord, you begin to submit your will over to the Lord, then God gets on your side. Then you have something to resist that devil with. Amen. When I look and I see the trick that the enemy plays upon some of our people, it makes me angry. But then we have to realize, children, we've all been in this long enough to have learned a little bit along the way. Praise the Lord. We have to resist that devil. You have to look out. I want you to be watchful, be mindful, be prayerful about things. The enemy would like to encourage you to become discouraged. Yeah. He would love nothing greater than to destroy you. Amen. But see, regardless of what He tells you, He does not have power over me and you. Regardless of how He goes on, He does not have power over the children of God. Through Christ, we overcame Him. Through Christ, we have power over the enemy. But see, the devil don't want you to think about that. He wants you to feel like there is no alternative and there is no choice. And any time he comes barking, there is a choice to make. Either yield and listen to him or resist the devil and he'll have to flee. Have you ever, you ever felt the enemy leave you? There have been times that the Lord has given me victory. And that old darkness. Now, when the devil, let me, let me, when the devil is hanging about, there's a darkness about. There's a, there's an ill feeling about. There's a, there's an evil that you just, you, you just, there, there's nothing else like him when it comes to evil. And you can tell when he's around because it's just an oppressive feeling and a depressive feeling. And the enemy will fight me and you with depression. He will. He'll come against us. He wants to fight our mind. He wants to hinder our prayers. And now I'm not here boasting of him. I'm just telling you this is the way that it is. But it does not mean he has power over you. You, through Jesus, have power over him. Amen. No matter what he says, you speak the name of Jesus with love and respect. The enemy knows that name. And he fears that name. Amen. Now there was a time when the enemy came to press Jesus to try to convince him that that what he was fixing to go through was we, not going to go through, Lord, uh, far be it from you. This will not happen. And, and the Lord began to rebuke, and he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou savest not the things of God. See, that, that devil does not really care about the church, he does not really care about your welfare, he doesn't care about the health of your body. He just wants to convince you to submit. Stay home. Isolate yourself. Has he ever told you this one? Nobody loves you anyhow. Right. How about this one? You're more of a hindrance to the church than a help. You ever go try to testify and here he comes. You sounded so foolish. 
you have embarrassed yourself in front of everybody. Uh, come on. That's the devil. And I am convinced that when he begins to come and talk to you that way, you must be doing something right. You must have testified and pleased the Lord. You must have sung and pleased God. Is that not what we're here tonight? To worship the Lord, to please Him, to gather together, and strengthen each other, encourage one another. But the enemy would like for us to come through the door and submit to Him. You're not going to have me tonight. But oh, so and so's not here. You can't get in tonight. Well, I love so and so. But I don't get in because so and so's here. No. Yeah. I get in because the Spirit of the Lord gets upon me. Yeah. And regardless of what folks will say, the devil can't keep the Spirit of the Lord off no. of me and you. If he could keep the Spirit off me and you, conviction never would have got upon us. Because conviction moves through the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Sure, if there's anybody he was going to keep the Spirit from moving on, it would be a sinner man, wouldn't it? Absolutely. But see, he didn't have power over that then, sure and he does not have power over that now. That's right. Amen. 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 Pray for all. Look up tonight, children. God is on your side. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you ain't had any reason to smile today, I just gave you a reason to smile. To know, as they were testifying a while ago, about how great God is, yeah. how powerful and how loving that He is, to know that that being is on your side. Yeah. Come on. Where? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What more could you want? Glory to God. You can have the United States military. I'll take God. Come on. Amen. Amen. He can move and the triggers won't work and the buttons won't work and the computer's shut down and the satellites crash, but there never ever will be a power failure in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. The devil will not call you to submit, but I'm telling you that I go on and resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Resist that enemy in the name of the Lord. I'm not doing what I'm doing in my name, Satan. I'm doing it in the name of the King of Kings. Amen. The one that will soon be crowned over all the nations of the world and you will be cast in to the lake of fire. Amen. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't submit to that enemy. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You might think you're going to hurt yourself if you're trying so hard. You're going to hurt yourself. If you reckon he really worries that you're going to hurt yourself? No. 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 Come on. Glory to God. They done looking one night they get holding up some other girl. And, and begin to move on that man like I've seen him in the morning. And I'm just waiting. Yeah, I'll leave it up to God. That'd be between him and the Lord. Yeah. But let me tell you, if, if that good holy ghost gets on him great enough and begins to walk him out from behind the tube. Yeah. Yeah. Time the Lord wants to walk him around the front. Oh, Guess who may be there to say, now you better take that cane with you when you go. You'll fall. You'll fall. Oh, if you go. Don't that sound just like it'll be? But I'm telling you, if God out of heaven said, step out and walk. God wills it, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, I want you to step out and walk. They're not a man in here big enough to knock you down. No, come on. Amen. Come on. Pray the Lord. Don't submit to that devil. You sit there sometime, maybe in that heart again to pound. And the Lord wants you to do something. And here comes another one. If you do that, you're going to disrupt the service. You just need to hold your peace. That ain't God would know you anyhow. In that moment, you have a choice. Submit to that enemy. Or resist that enemy. Um, Praise the Lord. Well, which one are we going to do, children? Glory to God. Glory to God. I'd like to I'd like to think that I would be prayed up to the point that I would submit to the right one and, and resist the other. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How good is the Lord? Very good. 
Can't you just feel how the Lord is just sweet? I love a good sweet meeting when the Spirit is present. It's just, it's just there's something so sweet about the Lord. Yes. And, and I, I felt since from yesterday, through today, to just kind of bring this uh, tonight about getting, getting it straight. Be sure that when we're resisting, that we're resisting the one we're supposed to resist. Wow. And be sure when we're submitting, we're submitting to the one we're supposed to submit to. To allow the Lord to have the right of way in your life. Allow the Lord, let Him move upon you the way that He wants to move on. Praise the Lord. I may have in my mind how I think that the Lord ought to move on me. But my thoughts are not like His thoughts. And my ways aren't like His ways. Well, my thoughts are puny and carnal and just man. What is what is the thought of man before the thought of Almighty God? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, you can't you can't do that. If you do that, you'll look silly. You you'll look foolish. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Didn't God choose the foolish things to this world and found the wise? In other words, uh, God can take a little that what man would say is nothing, and He can get in that, and He can work miracles and wonders. But now the enemy, if we open the door to Him, and we let Him in, He'll work shipwrecks and heart. We need to be sure who we listen to. Praise the Lord, children. Don't let the devil discourage you. Don't let him come to you and begin to talk to you. We've all been guilty of it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that all of, all of us at one time or another have been guilty of listening to the wrong one. Yeah. Oh, but when you, when you finally confront him with who he is and what he's doing, you say, in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. And you'll feel that darkness. I was talking about that gloom. That old evening you begin to feel that go away. That heavy load. That weight that presses like this. It begins to leave off of it. Because you resisted the enemy. And he had to flee from you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Ain't God good? Isn't God wonderful? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you how that God can do things. The night that uh, Freedom began to testify about when, when Brother Earl got out of work and had that one little box. Was it macaroni? Macaroni. That, that little macaroni and cheese. Now, some people, especially the enemy, the enemy would say, Why? Don't tell that. Ain't nobody gonna believe that. I believe it. Amen. Amen. Not only do I believe it, I thought of it several times since then. And every time I think about it, it helps me. It helps me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But wouldn't nothing would have pleased the devil more than to just talk her out of that testimony? Don't say that. Don't get up. Whatever you do. Don't tell them about that. You know why? You're going to give somebody faith. You're going to give somebody hope. I can't afford to do that. I've been sitting with them, talking with them all day long. And they've almost got them talk out of this. And if you get up and you testify and tell that, you're going to give them hope. And I may have to start all over on it. Don't that sound just like the end? Praise the Lord. I just, I just want to talk to you just a little bit tonight. And as soon as they out of the way, praise God. But don't, don't resist God. Submit to God. And resist that devil. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to. We've all been there. So we're on the way. We've been there. But we don't stay there. The moment you realize who it is, that's the moment you resist it. You say, wait a minute, devil, this is just nothing but you. That's all this is. And I'm not going. I have prayed too much to let that, that those prayers go by. I have sacrificed too much 
to let those sacrifices go to waste. I refuse to let you take my victory from me. Because children, if you if you listen to them long enough, you'll sack your victory out of you. Yeah. And there you'll set. You'll set in bad shape. I, I love the Lord this evening. Uh, I love his, his good ways. Uh, just a little bit that I've got. Uh, don't, don't need to go on quite as long. But sometimes uh, you just you feel so in, in the importance of, of getting the message over. You know, don't listen to the enemy. Resist him. Resist him. It's not always tempting you with sin. See, you, the devil in your flesh tagged him to get, try to get you to sin, but it's, it, it's sometimes him talking to your mind, trying to wear you out, trying to wear you down. Resist that enemy. Look up and know that hey, you might be like me. You may not feel like you're the greatest or the best, but praise God for somewhere on the vine. When the wind blows just right, you still move as the vine moves. I love the good Lord. Can y'all mind God? Do your best tonight. Test by saying, right? Whatever you want to do. The altar is always open. I remember one time that I was going through like that, and then it was just, and I was listening to it. And I was on the elevator at the hospital when I worked there. And I remember what they told the king in the Bible. Whether God deliver us or not, I might want to bow. Right. And I said that out loud. Right. And when I did, every bit about that thing. I right. I joy kind of. I was happy the rest of the day. It just left. It just, as soon as I said it, it was like this. <coughs>
don't want to testify.
and she probably been in the land in the house and stuff, and we was kind of, you know, I was talking about how we've been trying to pray for him and stuff, and he was saying, you that, you know, God don't care at all. But he does. God does care, and he may not always move, and you may have to live, Paul had to live with porn in his life and with God's, you know, all of his days. But I don't mean, God, I believe God cares. I, I've heard him tell people before, and a lot of times if I hear somebody get good prophecy, you know, I take that for me too. That means me too. If it yeah. means it for them, yeah. it means it for me too. Yeah. And I've heard him tell people before that what's important to them is important to them. And I believe that. I believe that it is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that it's like that, that he knows. I mean, he knows, he knows our heart. He knows what we can bear. He knows yes. what we need. And sometimes we want things, but it ain't what we need. And he's always got our best interest at heart. And I'm so glad that he does and he cares for me. Yeah. Man. Somebody is. Yeah, I want to make work for Yeah. It is so important. You know, tonight we just talk about this. 
asking one leader, is how important for us to draw together because we might be going through something that somebody else needs to hear. Because we all have been guilty of giving ear. We've all been guilty of getting home. But you know what the good thing is? Is that we have people that love us and pray for us. God is with us every day. You know, uh, it, let us do great for them. You know, Sister lost her job and she looked like a, she got an extra thing that I can do for my children. And it's really struggling me. But you know what? Let me just, I am so blessed. I have one three kids. They got food. They have clothes on their back. They may not get everything that they want, but they have everything they need. And I'm going to be grateful and thankful to the man that brought me from where I would have been in this world because of we, we really need to pray for all these people in the because of these drugs. I see all these little people walking up and down the road. And they were just in such a beautiful shape. The other day I was at the car and my kids were playing and a, a, a gentleman is on drugs. He came over and talked to me and he was, uh, he told me, he said, you know, Jimmy, he said, it's so good to see you. He said, it's so hard that there's so many people that ain't kind. He said, but you was kind to me. And I said, if, if, if you're not kind to them and nobody, then they don't know the love of God. So you have to be kind. You just don't have to love them. You just got to love them. Yeah. Amen. Somebody else want to testify? You know, I want to thank you, Lord, too, because I want to talk to my brother yesterday. And for something to go off with a minor or something other than a bit, and it must have been a big bit that it burned his neck about like that. I thought something did it. It was pretty big. I think I was watching over it. I thought it was all baby got burned. I don't know if he's on it. He made his arm on something. I want my brother to be safe. I've been praying for the Lord his heart, you know, as he thinks. But I'm not sure I want him to be safe. Yeah. Somebody else. Somebody else want to testify? Yeah.